Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Today we're going to look at yet another new model from Hongdian, the 1845. And this is a brass fountain pen with a number six size steel nib. If you've been following me at all, and you really should, you'll know that I'm no fan of metal pens. That is, of course, unless it's my beloved Wingsong 601 Flighter, or perhaps my Schaefer Icon, or my very favorite Waterman Karen. So if you've followed me at all, and you know you really should, I've told you twice now, you'll know that I'm a hypocrite. I do like some metal pens, but I'm very picky about them. They can't be slippery or fingerprint magnets or be heavy or even just butt ugly. PenBBS recently came out with a new model 499, which is a metal pen with a metal section. I wasn't completely thrilled by it, but there was a lot to like about it as well. Then I saw this new model from Hongdian and I thought it looked a lot like the PenBBS 499, so I decided I should compare them. And if you've followed me at all, third time's the charm, then you'll know I'm a big fan of PenBBS and very rarely do I recommend other pens over pen BBS. Well, we shall see then, shan't we? Right now. So another package that I bought on AliExpress has bypassed Canada Post and gone directly to my door. Uh, this time on a Saturday night, uh, late at night in the dark. Uh, so it's very interesting that uh, stuff is getting here fairly quickly without using the post office. And this one, because they've covered up the tracking number, I had to guess at which one it was, and I think I know what it is. Uh, this is the Hongdian metal pen. Let's see if I'm right. And it's in cellophane. Some people like this. There you go for you ASMR fans. I think it should come out. There we go. This is the Hongdian 1845. And I also, I'm not a big fan of metal pens, uh, but because Pen BBS came out with a new model brass pen, I wanted to compare it to this new model pen bbs 499 that just came out and i did a review on let's see is that a pull no it's a screw cap and it has a really interesting section that has some texture on it and i was hoping that texture would be a little bit rough so that uh, it would get some grip but it feels very smooth but the body of the pen is very nice has a fluting to it and that pattern is very, very nice. And there's a bit of a flare there. And there's a number six size Hongdian. Uh, and this one is in fine. So I'll be interested to see how these two pens uh, compare to each other. The Hongdian 1845. And what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then do a writing sample. And after the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. Before we look at this 1845 specifically, let's do a good close AB comparison between the Hongdian 1845 and the Pen BBS 499, as that is what prompted this purchase in the first place. Here is the 1845 Hongdian, and here is the Pen BBS 499, and here they are side by each. They feel like they are relatively the same weight, although I haven't measured them yet. And the Pen BBS 499 is a good oh, quarter of an inch longer than the Hongdian. Yes, I can use metric and imperial at the same time. I'm a Canadian, and I'm ambimextrous. And where the Pen BBS 499 has a matte lacquer over brass finish with gold colored hardware, the Hongdian is in a gloss lacquer over brass with gold colored hardware and has a ribbed pattern stamped or rolled or otherwise embedded into the cap. The Pen BBS has a silky smooth snap cap design, whereas the Hongdian unscrews with way too many rotations. And both pens have number six size 
steel nibs and very textured uh, metal sections both pens post securely but the Hongdian 1845 posts deeply and uh, is a good deal shorter than the pen bbs when posted i don't write with this pen bbs posted at all because it is back weighted and more like a baseball bat when it's posted but the hongdian in the hand even posted is not too bad at all so let's look at this hongdian 1845 specifically overall the pen is very very classy looking it has a flat top and bottom finials has a nice shape tapering up to a broad cap band and then back down again it has some very elegant lines very classy and understated from the top we see a flat gold metal finial that has lt hongdian 1845 and the hongdian logo stamped into it the clip is substantial i thought at first i wouldn't be able to budget because it looks so thick but they have the clip on a spring-loaded pivot which makes it very easy to use and it pivots up quite a bit as you can see right there uh, so you can clip it to some fairly thick things like a binder or portfolio covers the cap and the barrel have a ribbed pattern embedded into them which gives the pen some nice tactile texture and keeps the pen from being too slippery the cap tapers up to a wide gold metal band uh, that continues the curve of the cap and it has lt hongdian engraved into the front of it and no model on the back i thought that was a model but it's just scratches so it shows how durable that is this pen is only like a couple weeks old there's a very small step down to the barrel which tapers all the way down to the gold metal flat end finial which is nicely rounded the cap unscrews with one two yes three and a half turns and i think that might be the record for how many turns it takes to unscrew a fountain pen uh, cap that i've ever had let's check over here with the current champion this is the opus 88 bella and it was the reigning champion for turns let's see one i can't remember two three yeah three and a bit so the crown has now been lost sorry opus hongdian now has the crown for the most turns to open a fountain pen in my experience and we see a long tapering gold metal section that has a brushed texture to it a small flare towards the number six size two-toned steel nib and black plastic feed the ring and cap threads at the top of the barrel are not sharp and are very unobtrusive the section is comfortable with lots of room for a variety of grip styles although i thought that it actually might be a little bit more grippy uh, having all that texture on it but that is very very smooth it doesn't seem to have any roughness to it that texture at all let's take a closer look at this nib this nib is identical to the nib on the Hongdian 1841. Here's that pen and its nib. This pen made my best of 2021 list last year. It's a plastic pen in a classic shape, and it's actually a lovely, lovely writer. The nib has a silver border, and then 1997, which is the year of the founding of the company, I think, the Hongdian logo and then Lan Chan let's see let's pronounce this correctly and then Lan Tian Lui Shui Zhe Jiang I'm sure I'm butchering that pronunciation but that's what it looks like to my English brain and an F for fine the nib and feed are part of a nib collar assembly that unscrews easily for replacement cleaning and maintenance you can also pull that nib from the nib collar uh, just to swap the nib if you like and that's something i did right off the bat since i had such trouble matching the nibs for both the hongdian m6 and the m7 piston fillers i thought i'd see if this pen's cap would allow for other nibs to be swapped i tried my kaigalu long blades a jinhao number six and a pen bbs number six nib with no luck 
those nibs are too thick and long to get into this nib assembly. The section unscrews to reveal the included cartridge converter and a silicone o-ring at the end of the nozzle right there that helps keep the barrel from unscrewing during use because it's metal on metal. The pen will accept Hongdian or what I like to call Chinese standard cartridges that have throat and collar sizes which I will post right here. And the inside of the cap shows a black plastic cap liner that has the cap threads integrated into it so it's plastic threads on on metal threads of the barrel. The cap posts deeply and securely as I demonstrated earlier and although it does shift the balance of the pen backwards it's not unpleasant to write with like this. The pen is plenty long enough to write with unposted and has a slightly better balance this way. I bought this pen on AliExpress and it comes in two styles all gold and black with gold hardware like I have here and with only two nib options extra fine and fine. Hongdian would do well to start producing some replacement nibs in medium as these number six size pens uh, from this 1845, the 1841, the N6, and the N7 are all becoming very, very popular pens. And I think people are looking for some medium nibs. I, I know that I am. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here we are with the Hongdian 1845 with a Pen BBS 499, a Pen BBS 380, a Cross Calais, and a Jinhao 997. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. You see that the Pen BBS 380 is currently configured with a roller ball, but it does come with a steel number six size uh, Pen BBS nib. The Cross Calais and the Jinhao 997 are both number five size nibs. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. You can see that the Hongdian 1845 is the shortest of the lot unposted. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper and this is the Hongdian eighteen forty five and it has a fine number six size steel nib. Let's check the wetness. You see, for a fine nib, this is plenty wet indeed. It certainly didn't behave like a fine Chinese steel nib at first. It was quite uncontrollable and sharp at the same time, which led me to believe that the nib had been sprung. Now, you should know that I didn't do anything to this nib at all. Um, I cleaned the pen with soapy water, as I always do, and rinsed it out and dried it all completely before I inked it. That's it. So after doing a writing sample, I rinsed it out again and examined the nib and there was a lot of daylight between those tines. So I spent about a half an hour with the nib out of the nib unit getting those tines back together again and then realigning them. The nib now behaves a little bit better but let me show you the writing sample that I did after inking the pen for the first time and here it is. You can see that right out of the box or package uh, it was very thick indeed, very, very wet, but look at this. I even wrote wow here. Uh, that just came out like a double broad, and it was bouncing as well, which is unusual for a Chinese steel nib, especially these Hongdian nibs I've experienced before, and this has exactly the same nib as the 1841. So I wrote a little bit, and then I, as I said, worked on it, uh, and then after I unsprung the nib, me about 30 minutes of work on it. Um, it's still a little bit soft but it was not a gusher anymore. So let's get back to where we were. So the nib behaves a little bit better now but I doubt that I'll ever get this nib back to a uh, place where I feel comfortable writing with it. 
it has a bit of scratch in both directions and you can hear that on the page it's now giving me a line that is 0 0.4 millimeters in thickness which is a western western extra fine and a japanese fine western extra fine japanese fine and the ink today is J Urbain Stormy Gray. This is a lovely uh, gray, dark gray charcoal ink that has a gold fleck to it, which is very nice. And here are some close matches to this ink from inkswatch.com. I should mention that you can go to inkswatch.com anytime you want to match any ink you want and even add your own inks if they're not there in the database. It's a very, very good resource. And as to line variation, well, I'm hesitant to press on this because I just got it back into shape again. And it's a stiff steel nib anyway, so you're not going to expect this to flex. Again, I didn't do anything to the nib. It came sprung, pre-sprung. Well, maybe they should charge extra for that service. Chinese nibs are not known for their flexy character at all. And for our quote. So, what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, I'm on the fence about this pen. I want to like it for many reasons, but the pen fought back. Sack of shit. So first I'll say what I like about it. I love the elegant styling of the pen with its pinstripe suit and its fine, elegant lines. I love how well the pen posts. Finally, a Chinese pen company that discovered we like that. And I love the spring-loaded pivoting clip the number six size steel nib, uh, the long section, even if it is a bit slippery, but this pen bit me in the butt. Yeah. Oh, got my butt. Oh, you landed on your butt? <laughs> Did you hurt it? Yeah. Oh. You wanna kiss my butt? <laughs> no, I... The nib is a throwaway, unfortunately, but I'd actually forgive that if I could swap in another number six, but no. Hongdin wants to be unique. So learn something from Jinhao, folks. If you have a Jinhao X450, a Jinhao X750, a 159, or the beautiful new Jinhao 100 Centennials, you can use a Yovo, a Bach, a Schmidt, a Canwright, a Kaigalu, a Ranga, whatever type of uh, stock number six nib you want, as long as it's a number six. But for Hongdian, not only do they not take any other nibs in the number six size nib pens, they don't make anything but extra fine and fine. I mean, come on guys, sheesh, give us a break. And on top of that, they make you turn this cap three and a half times to get at that awful nib. I can tell you with my Parker Jotter, I've already finished the New York Times crossword puzzle before you've even got your cap off. So you're not going to win over ballpoint users by making us wait, especially when the payoff for all that Antissa is a lousy, scratchy, gushy nib. I could actually swap the nib unit from the 1841 to the 1845, but that would just ruin a wonderful pen for a mediocre heavy metal pen. <laughs> And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And please check the description below for a link to Goldspot Pens as I'm now an affiliate and any purchases you make uh, using that link will support my channel at no extra cost to you. And I thank you. And you can join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month. And I promise I'll answer your comments in the comments section and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos for members only. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching.
And that's all she wrote. I made this. 